Hello and welcome back to uh, our critical analysis of Failure to Launch, the 2000s movie starring Matthew McConaughey and Sarah Jessica Parker. This is part three of our critical examination of Failure to Launch here on Today with Tony. Um, just if you haven't caught it before, you're going to want to go back and watch parts one and two and possibly part four um if it exists yet and then part seven and then this part um i'm doing a memento thing with this you can do your own memento thing with this so we're getting up to our elbows in this movie uh so you're gonna want some of those just really long rubber gloves that farmers use uh, in order to get up to their elbows in animals. So just pretend that this movie is uh, some kind of domestic animal, maybe a cow, that needs a, a full internal inspection using your arm. And you got to put a really long glove on to just get that arm in there. If you've been paying attention at all in parts one and two, you're going to know where we're going with this. Um, we're going to overturn some stones and those... Now, what you're saying is, are those stones of truth? No. They're just regular stones, probably made of like quartz and feldspar and other commonly found minerals, just regular stone stuff. But when you turn the stone over, underneath stones there are insects and the stones we'll be turning over in this movie just regular stones have under them the squirming insects of truth and while paul hollywood and the hollywood establishment uh would both tell you no you don't want to eat those insects those are bad for you these are the insects of truth and here on youtube we uh, are only interested in truth. You want to get your grub bib. You want to get your grub handling gloves. We're going to devour these slimy, crunchy morsels of objective truth. We're going to be treasure hunting within the movie for the treasure of truth, which is perhaps even more valuable than gold. Today on Today with Tony, we're going to turn our DVDs over. We're going to look at the copy of the Declaration of Independence that's on that disc. We're going to turn that copy of the Declaration of Independence over and see what treasure map is on the back of that. So we're starting today. We're around in our first two analyses. We've gotten around 32 minutes into the movie. And what is our first stone to uncover? So under the stone, there's going to be a seedy underbelly. And that seedy underbelly will be full of insects. But don't, let me clarify, that is a turn of phrase. Uh, a stone does not have any sort of belly. They don't reproduce using seeds. How do stones reproduce? Where do they get more stones from? How, how do you make more stones? We've got our first stone of truth, 32 minutes into the movie, and under most stones that you turn over, just regular stones, not stones of truth, under most stones that you turn over, what you're going to find is a failure to launch DVD. And so what you want to do is just press play on that DVD player and then sit perfectly still uh, for 32 minutes well, we catch up to where we are since this is part three of our critical examination of failure to launch. We are starting some of the way into the movie, 32 minutes in. What happens there is that we uncover the first pebble in what is going to be an avalanche 
of stones to turn over. So we're turning over a pebble and then a series of larger and larger rocks traveling with more energy. They're going to be coming our way and we are going to be turning them all over, finding the insects of truth underneath, eating those insects, gaining their knowledge, gaining their power. Just get, we're getting straight to the center of the earth of truth. And our first pebble we see in this screenshot. Now, can you tell what we're looking at in this screenshot? It, it looks like a conventional movie scene. So what we have here is Matthew McConaughey, and he's on a, a sailboat. And if you're familiar with Failure to Launch, you'll know that Matthew McConaughey so far has been metaphorically a boat who is unable to launch from the dock of his parents' uh, comfortable home that's filled with delicious bubbly Pepsi products and Allsport. Uh, there's some very comfortable chairs in that home now. Uh, you've got Super Bowl champion Terry Bradshaw. You have Kathy Bates. Uh, those are your parents. It's a great place. to. It's just a great harbor to be a boat in. So you would never launch from that if you were a reasonable person. And that's Matthew McConaughey. That's almost what he is. This is this screenshot is going to be like uh, a stone that we need to turn over in order to uncover the maggots of truth. And what do you do with a stone that you need to turn over in order to uncover the, the mass of maggots of truth underneath? We turn it over. So we are actually going to take this screenshot and rotate it 180 degrees. And do you see what happens? That's correct. Matthew McConaughey sticks to the boat. And now you're asking why, why does he stick to the boat? Uh, as you can see, Sarah Jessica Parker has fallen off the boat, uh, which is what would happen to anybody who's on a boat that's been turned over. What does this mean? about Matthew McConaughey. And if you've watched the previous two videos, and if you've been paying attention to Matthew McConaughey just in general, in his career, in his life, in his naked bongo police incidents, you probably have an inkling as to what I'm getting at here, but it's something that everybody has been afraid to say. It's something that, you know, you think it and you you think to yourself, there's no way that can be true. Matthew McConaughey sticks to the boat because Matthew McConaughey isn't just on a boat. He is the boat. Now, a normal human, they have skin made of classic skin flesh. Uh, really good stuff, great material, great to work with, great to make, you know, to enclose a human's meats and bones with. But if we look closely at Matthew McConaughey, we will see that he does not have normal skin flesh. He is, in fact, a series of thin wood panels uh, riveted together, and that's something you see on boats. Now, if, if we zoom out a little bit, if we look at this problem from 20,000 feet, like we are in an airplane, you'll, you would notice, you would say to yourself, where does Matthew McConaughey live? He lives in Texas. Where is Texas? Very far from any icebergs. Icebergs are the natural enemies of boats, as we've all learned from U571. They, you just don't want to get a boat near an iceberg, and McConaughey knows that. That's why you don't see him living in Greenland. That's why you don't see him living in Tierra del Fuego. That's why you don't see him anywhere near Antarctica, because he's a boat. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to think about an iceberg. He says, "Where aren't there icebergs, Texas?" So we are looking at this from 20,000 feet. Let's say the plane of truth that we're in has to get up to 40,000 feet to avoid some turbulence. Matthew McConaughey, we've all heard about the McConaissance. Why did that happen? Why does Matthew McConaughey keep coming back? Because he can't sink him. He's just like a boat. Now, say this plane of truth that we're in has to make a sudden, sharp descent to avoid some turbulence or a different plane of truth coming our way. Uh, and then we're back looking at failure to launch very closely. So in failure to launch, there's a, a running, I wouldn't call it a joke, 
uh, perhaps a, there aren't any jokes in this movie. So it's not a running joke, but it's, it's a running occurrence. It's a reoccurring theme that animals are nearly constantly attacking Matthew McConaughey. He gets attacked by some kind of land mammal. He gets attacked by an ocean mammal. And why is that? Why do animals hate him so much? Well, we all know that animals hate boats from the generational memory of being locked up on Noah's Ark during the Great Flood. Uh, and they they just instinctively, they see him. They see that that those rivets in his skin. They see that they never see him on anything but a boat. And they put it together. They see him. They think of the Ark. And they attack. We might as well start calling Matthew McConaughey Old Ironsides. We should get him on a tall ship tour. We should get him in the, all the harbors. We got to get him in Boston. We got to get him in New York. We got to get him in Portsmouth. We got to get him in Duluth. Tall ships get around. They get to see the world. Matthew McConaughey is a tall wooden ship waiting to join a tall ship tour. This is baffling to me that more people haven't come up with this. I feel almost alone out here. I feel like a boat lost at sea, frankly. Uh, I feel like an island of truth, maybe waiting to be overturned by a Godzilla of curiosity. Uh, and then my squirming tentacles of truth will be revealed and everybody else will see what I'm seeing. What I want now, I want to hear back. I want other examples and I, I need you, the YouTube audience to help me with this. So just go out there, lift up some stones, regular stones, stones of truth. It doesn't matter at this point. The answers, they're there. Eat the bugs that are underneath, gain their knowledge, find out what does it mean to live in a world where Matthew McConaughey is a boat. I need, I can't deal with this avalanche of truth by myself. I'm putting out a general call out. Please help me. I need the giant magnifying glass of internet sleuthing to swing around and point its lens at the boat that is Matthew McConaughey. Thanks again. This has been Failure to Launch Part 3, a critical examination of Failure to Launch. Until next time, this has been Today with Tony. Today, on Today with Tony, we looked at Matthew McConaughey, Human Boat. Thank you.